motivation. Everyone struggles with it from time to time, even an Olympic athlete like Hells. I think sometimes if you look at maybe my Instagram or Twitter, you'd think I'm always in the gym, always motivated, but that can be far from the truth. Yeah, and being on expeditions all year long is really tricky for training. So particularly in the middle of the rainforest, there is no gym. So we thought that we would share with you some of the tips and tricks that we have for keeping yourself in motivation. So yeah, we just had a really good conversation about what motivates us and we thought we'd actually share that with you over the next five days, five tips, five ways to get motivated. It's not a rule for life, it's not a rule for everyone, but hopefully something will work for you. Go on. Oh, <laughs> Everyone wakes up some mornings and just does not feel like training. So there's something that I tend to do when I get to the gym. The first thing I do is I know I'm going to do something like slams or battle ropes just for a few minutes. The first thing I do when I get into the gym and it usually gets me ready and raring to go. It's all about getting your body's natural chemicals like testosterone and adrenaline racing. So for me, it's always uh, boxing, getting on a bag, or using the pads, something I can feel getting my aggression going, my blood pumping, and then all of a sudden, all that lethargy just disappears. And it can be as mental as it is physical. Sometimes just getting in the gym is one step, the next step is just kind of going, right, I know what my first exercise is, I've done that, and now I feel awake and ready to go. So instead of jumping onto a machine for an hour and slogging away at it, do a couple of minutes of something super intense that gets your blood pumping, gets the adrenaline and the testosterone going, and everything will be a breeze. It can become quite easy for training to become stagnant, so our next tip is to mix it up. Yeah, always keep it moving. Don't let your body get used to the kind of training you're doing. And more importantly, don't ever let yourself get bored. Even if you love one type of training and you're training for something specific, doing one thing that changes that goal, that maybe you, to put you out of your comfort zone can be really useful. If you love running, maybe try to master a handstand. It's exciting, it's something new, it's something different, and it doesn't have to detract from the other thing you're doing. So the best way of doing that is always finding a new channel, <laughs> trying lots of different kinds of training. Having a goal that may be beyond you it could be one simple move that you want to try and make work. And if you've done nothing but rowing for eight years of your life, maybe try going for a kayak. Now, through years of rowing on the Olympic team, I know what having teammates can do for your training. Every day walking into training with Heather meant I had someone to rely on. So that's our next tip, train with a partner. For me, obviously having her telling me what to do, shouting at me, cracking the whip makes a massive difference. But for everyone out there, having a training partner always makes it easier. For a, for a start, it's harder to make excuses about not going to the gym if you're meeting someone there and you might be letting someone down. But actually, just meeting up with someone to go for a run means you know you've got that knock on the door at 6am and you're going to go with that person that you promised. I also find that if we're doing stomach exercises together, I will definitely do four or five more reps if I'm next to Helen than I would if I was on my own. It's much easier to give up when you haven't got someone you're competing against, even in the tiniest of senses. So that's our tip. Meet up with someone, create a group, create a training partner, create someone that you know is going to be there for you in the training. So this tip is taking the opportunities and that kind of sounds like a big grand statement but actually I'm talking about taking the tiny increments in the day that are available to you. This is something that Helen's really really good at is she's got 10 minutes free and she'll make sure that she trains in that 10 minutes whereas I tend to go oh that's not enough to be worth bothering about. The fact is those 10 minutes add up. It's something that as a new mum I found really useful so if I've got a little window where Logan is either in a really good mood and he wants to play or he's asleep I can do something like every minute on the minute for 10 minutes and if you do that six times a week you have an hour session by the end of the week. I would say also improvise. You can't always get to a good gym, you can't always get to a gym at all but you can always find something around you that you can make work. When I travel I always take a skipping rope, a suspension trainer and that's generally enough for me to do almost everything I could do in the gym. Just being a bit creative works really well. So 
the last of our tips is goal setting. And for both of us, it's critical. For me, I'm always training for the next expedition. I always need to be in shape for the next climb or for the next uh, big kayak. And the fear of what will happen if it goes wrong or if I'm not up to it is enough to drive me on every day. And don't think your goal is too small. I've had lots of goals from beating 20 minutes of the local park runs, doing a half Ironman, and those for me are just as exciting because I've chosen them for a reason. I've chosen them because they excite me. So never underestimate the power of your goal personally for you. Entering events can be fantastic as well. Perhaps you have the knowledge that everyone else around you knows that you're focusing on that task. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of fear of failure. I've bought the t-shirt, I need to get my trainers on and go out and do the training for it. Even more so if you're doing it for something or someone that's very important to you.